Hey y'all, Patrick here, and welcome to Show Me What You Base, the series where you guys send in your absolute favorite ride or die, take it to the grave instrument. The bass that makes you say, damn, it's absolutely perfect. The bass that makes you want to put a ring on it and say, I do. Or maybe not go that far, but you know what I mean. The bass that just feels and sounds perfect no matter what. But you know what? We're on episode six already, and let's just jump right into it. First up from Nicola, he says, hi, Patrick. I'm Nicola, an Italian fan. Nice, dude. These are my babies. I bought the GNL L2000 tribute in 2014. I worked a lot as a barman, and as soon as I have been paid, I spent all my money on this bass. I know you like this kind of color on bass. It was perfect to me because I was playing for a rap metal band, and this bass allowed me to have many useful sounds. I'm also in a bass guitar pedals obsession, but that's another story, and I hope you could be the next topic. Oh no. Hashtag, I want to see your pedal board. I can see that happening. <laughs> Man. You're not lying. I do love that kind of color on bass. Like, oh, look at that. I absolutely love that like blue sunburst, it, but it's like a sunburst, but blue burst. And ugh, I'm telling y'all, I really do need to try GNL. And I love like, how usually GNLs have the humbuckers too. So I feel they have that super thick sound as well. From Taryn, he says, hey, Patrick, love the channel and the new video idea. Thanks, man. Here's my number one bass, a 2005 Fender Highway 1 Precision Bass. I added a badass two bridge and a jazz pickup. It's wired as just a volume pod and a three-way pickup selector. The reason it's my number one is because of how well this bass records. Best regards. Tear. Oh, yeah. We're just going to go ahead and get it out of the way. It's a P bass. Come on. That sunburst, that tortoiseshell pit guard. I love that you added that badass bridge on it, as well as you go ahead and routed for the jazz pickup, I guess. <laughs> nice, man. From Ed, he says, Hi, Patrick. Awesome idea with having people send you your bases. This is an LTD B1004 SE, specifically the older model with a rosewood top and fretboard, a satin Wingate neck with bubinga strips, and a swamp ash body. It was my first higher end bass, and it's taken some major beatings over the years but it's never let me down and plays better than anything I've gotten since. Stay safe, love all your videos, and positivity, Ed. Thanks, man. Oh, dude, that's pretty sick. <laughs> I really like the multi-scale features of it. The wood of that body is absolutely gorgeous, man. I don't know if I really care for the body style itself, but it looks really ergonomic with the cuts on it, but man, that is just super slick looking, though. Oh, that looks really <laughs> comfy to play. I like that a lot. Next up from Tony, he says, hello there. I always wanted an Ibanez for my teens, because I was crazy for the alternative new metal era. I was 14. Dude, same, man. And Ibanez instruments were so much popular. That's really true. Finally, a few months ago, I made this wish come true. I present you my favorite bass. P.S. It's great for rock metal, but pop too. Greetings from Italy. Man, you can't go wrong with Ibanez's. Like, I'm truly shocked just how awesome they are. It's not something I wasn't expecting, but it's just one of those things where it just really surprises me. I like the MGs on that a lot. And with Ibanez's, they have some of the most unique necks where they're wide, but really thin too. They're just super easy to go up and down. Like, it's just so awesome to play. I don't know. Awesome bass, dude. From Martin Cliff, my homie over on Patreon. If you want to be like Martin and all these other beautiful people right here, mwah, and help support the channel, you can be included in things like early access to videos, giveaways, and more. It says, hi, Patrick. My ticket to the gray bass is my Mike Lowell M5. I had it built for my 40th birthday, gift for my long-suffering wife, but it arrived a couple months earlier than expected, in October 2017. It's swamp ash with flame maple, bird's eye maple fretboard, 35-inch scale, gold hardware, and it's super light for a five-string. Originally came with more Duncan pickups, but I swapped those for Bartolini's. I know some people aren't into the whole boutique thing, but Mike just built some really solid, high quality instruments. While I'm not a one bass guy, I have a smaller number, two five strings, a P bass, a J bass, and a fretless, so they all have to earn their place in my rack. Cheers for all the cool stuff you put on your channel. Best wishes, Mark. Mark, thank you so much, man, and thank you for the support, too. Ooh. I I love that top, man. Oh man, you can really see the bird's eye maple of that fretboard too. Ooh, that looks so good with the gold hardware as well. I have no experience with Mike Lowell's, but I've heard some great things about them. And man, this just looks so exquisite. From Morgan War, he says, this is my ESP LTD AP5 base. Beautiful solid base that's sustained for days and the tone you can get from it is amazing. For specs, you have an alder body, bolt-on maple neck, thin U profile, Macassar ebony fingerboard, 400 millimeter radius dot inlays, 34 inch scale length, 21 extra jumbo frets, 45 millimeter molded nut, Babix FCH5 bridge, Grover tuners, you have an EMG P5 in the middle and an EMG LJ5 in the bridge, active electronics with volume, pickup balance and tone controls. I also run it with my Dark Glass 212 cab with my Dark Glass Microtubes 500 head and my Hyperluminal compressor pedal, Dark Glass X series distortion pedal. It's one hell of a good setup, man. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick, for checking out my setup. Sincerely at Morgan War. Thank you for submitting it, man. Ah. Uh... I love that, dude. Oh man, the colors alone. 
in this episode are killing me. Man, I just cannot get over that blue. It looks so good. Oh, and I bet it sounds so sick through that rig too, man. Mwah. It's awesome. Next up from Jacob, he says, obviously not finished yet. Just got the rest of the parts I needed the other day. It's basically a Fender P bass, but with an Ibanez Iceman body. It has a jazz bass neck, all black hardware, hip shot badass bridge and shallow tuners. And I'm going to install the Geezer Butler pickup in it. I'm going to paint it seafoam green. Hmm. That is different. So you have the Ibanez Iceman body, then you have the Fender P bass neck. It hurts my brain, but in a good way, that makes sense. I mean, other than that, you got the awesome badass bridge. You're gonna have those killer tuners on it. Have that Geezer Butler pickup with it. I really wanna see the finished product on this. Please, please, please send me the finished product of this, man. I really wanna see it. From Alex, he says, hey Pat, how are you? I saw you started this new series where you let viewers send in pictures of their bases so you can show them off and decide to give it a go. What I have here is a Troy Sanders signature Jaguar bass from Fender. Not the one you got, but the active passive switch one. Ah, so you have the real Fender one. I only have the Squire one, but still though, that Squire one was sick. Troy Sanders has been an inspiration to me since before I touched the bass and only after a year of playing, I finally managed to get my hands on this beauty. Before that, I played an Ibanez SR305 EB five string, which I still have, but only play when that extra low one is needed. Anyway, super satisfied with the bass and it looks friggin' amazing. Below are pictures and here's a link to me covering the mother load with it. And I'll go ahead and put that in the description as well because, and I'll go ahead and link that in the description below too so you guys can watch it because the mother load is a sick song. Ah, uh, yep. There it is, man. It's so simple, but it's so badass, man. That is so cool. From Elias, he says, this is my Fender American Original 70s Jazz Bass. Bought it last two months for $2,200. So far, I'm enjoying it, loving it. I may add a preamp with gold control knobs, gold tuning gears, and maybe a gold bridge, but for now, I'm enjoying it and playing it every single day. And that's what matters right there. Oh yeah, man, there's something about American Fenders, dude. They just, if you play one, you know, like American Fenders just feel so good. That just looks so classic too. From Andrew, he says, hey Patrick, my pretty girl is a 99 Rickenbacker 4001 V6 63 stock jet glow got her at norm's rare guitars in la two years ago cheers andrew i know i just said the jazz bass is class but like look at this come on it's a rick they're so cool looking to me i don't know if i could ever drop that much money on one though unless i find a really good deal on a used one one day man i just know like real ricks are like something else though from mr clay greg he says hey pat it's hard to choose between this and my warwick but i think the jag is definitely the winner first run of the made in japan jaguar bases i added wilkinson tuners because the originals were so dirty tarnished added graph tech saddles as well and sand the gloss off the back of the neck that it's a simple mod but man it makes a huge difference and treated it with gun oil at the lawler shop my boss and i laser cut a black pit guard and added the cream pickup covers the active eq is incredible and the action is the lowest i've ever played on the bass the neck is thinner than a jazz bass and it's super fast thick tone and an overall extremely comfortable bass it'll be with me forever oh just the simplicity of it is so sick i love the simple little details of the new saddles like man that is so cool looking y'all are making me want to get a jaguar now uh i need to get rid of bases before i start buying new ones y'all next up from dude i'm not even gonna disrespect you by trying to uh pronounce your last name and i'm very sorry but next up from teodorus he says this is my wood gorilla custom tulip five base. It's a semi-custom base from Serbia made especially for me. It's not that expensive for a custom base, but it has so much character and everything that I want. It may have some flaws, but I would never trade it for anything as I think it is really a part of me. Whoa. Huh. Look at the wood on that. It's ugly, but I think I love it. I know I want to play it. It looks super comfortable, man. Like, wow. I think I'm going to keep coming back to this one. <laughs> this is so cool looking but really ugly at the same time, but I think you just broke my brain. <laughs> From Brandon Watt, he says, this bass will go to the grave with me. 2013 Spectre Code of 4 Deluxe. Jazz basses have always been my favorite body shape, and this one is a great example of traditional and modern bass design. To my ears, she sounds near perfect, so versatile and fun to play. I've added a hip shot detuner and removed the neck volume knob, so I'll stop bumping my middle finger while slapping. Ooh, man, look at that top. God, the colors of the basses you guys are sending me today. Oh my God. God, that is so cool looking, man. I don't really care for Spectre's headstocks on their J style basses. I kind of wish they would put their regular headstocks on the J basses as well. But other than that, man, this looks so cool. Next up from Nano, he says, hello, I'm Nano from Chile. 
This is my Samic Jazz Bass. It's been my only bass and I've had it since 1999. As you can see, it's had several repairs made by me. Aesthetically, it's not so bad to have so many years and so much music in it. I've played with other basses, but I know mine by heart. Its structure and its sound. I love him. A hug and a thank you very much for the opportunity. Dude, thank you so much for submitting, man. So we got like a Samic Jazz Bass in this red color with this custom pick guard, it looks like. You got the gold knobs on it. Whoa, what happened there? I don't think I've ever seen a screw in the side of the headstock like that. Is that to keep it together? I really I really like how you put the green on the front of the headstock like you did for the pit guard too so it matches that's super awesome man Next up from Ewan, he says, I got this bass from a family friend slash bass teacher a couple years ago after a few months of learning from him. This is the first bass I've ever owned and it served me well whenever I just felt like jamming along and I could use it for the Christian youth group church services, mainly because it was the only bass I had at the time. Even though I bought a few more basses, this one will always be my go-to. Hmm, what is that? I can't even tell what that is, but it's got like a pretty like radical looking just like swoop and curves to it though. The headstock kind of reminds me of a bottle opener, so it's not my favorite, but I really like the body style though. From Adam Mays, he says, Squire Jaguar had a single humbucker or soap bar in it, bought it used for 180 bucks, bought a set of Fishman's, and routed out the body for the second pickup. Wired it up and she worked. Put a kick-ass bridge on it and for the final part, got a roasted maple neck with Indian rosewood fretboard and block inlays from Warmoth. Freaking love it. Thanks, Patrick. Adam. Oh, the Jaguar body, the silver finish, the Fishman's. Uh, Y'all out here really trying to make me buy more bases when that's the last thing I need to do. Man, this is sick. From Sean, he says, this is my all green Music Man Sub 4 HH Stingray. Got it only a few days ago and I already love it and has designated it my main bass. It's a budget level bass, but it sounds amazing. It has everything my old classic Stingray has, but the low mids are much more clear and present because of that added neck pickup. It has a two band active EQ and a five way selector switch. I'd leave the switch in the middle position because it is the only tone I want out of this bass. I'm a big Tool fan and love playing covers of Tool songs, and this bass has brought me the closest to getting Justin Chancellor's tone without spending a lot of money. I'm also a gigging musician in a band, and the sound of this bass is almost perfect for what I want. I can't wait to play some shows with this bass when this COVID-19 crisis ends, whenever that will be. Thanks a bunch, Sean. Dude, we're all waiting for all this crap to be over. I hope you guys, no matter where in the world you are though, are staying safe and just looking out for each other. Man, it's that Sterling. Man, I love that olive green. And they sound so good and feel really solid too, especially for the price that they are, man. Next up from Kieran Ward, he says, Hey Patrick, hope you're doing well in these crazy times. Saw your video and wanted to send you my grave bass. It's an unholy love child of a 2000 Galactic Purple Squire Precision Bass and a 2009 Arctic White Fender Precision Bass. In 2013, 2014, I took the neck from the Fender and put it on the Squire body. And then I changed the pickups to Seymour Duncan SPB3 and SJB3s. And it's an absolute dream. For me, it's the perfect middle ground between a precision bass and a jazz bass. I've since bought some more expensive, better basses, such as a PVT-40 and a Gibson Ripper, which are both awesome to me, but they still don't hold a candle to this bass. Taught me the important lesson that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get great gear. I don't have a lot of good pictures of it, but there's plenty of videos on it on my channel. I appreciate you're probably busy, but if you have the time and want to check it out, I appreciate that a lot. Now go ahead and put this in the description as well. Thanks for taking the time to check out my base. I've been a fan of your videos for years now, and you've inspired me a lot with my own YouTube channel. Take it easy, man. Dude, thank you so much. Ooh, awesome, awesome color. Was it galactic purple, right? That is so cool, man. I think it pairs really well with that maple neck too from that Fender. Ooh, that's slick. From Donovan, he says, base that I'll take to the grave? This is the one I bought back from the grave. Oh, -ho. flip and reverse it. I like it. Schechter Stiletto Elite 5. Back in college, it fell off its stand and the neck snapped. Oh my God. I was able to salvage it with super glue and decided not to clean up the glue as I felt it gave it character. Battle scars, baby. <laughs> I love that. Probably should have had it done professionally, but I was young and dumb, and somehow she still plays like a dream. It's neck through with super low action, and tone is full bass. Best feeling bass I've ever laid my hands on, and I've messed around with many three or four times as expensive. Sometimes I forgot how pretty the finish is till I look at it in detail. It was $600 maybe 11 years ago, and for what I've seen, it's discontinued. The most similar model I see now is the Stiletto Studio, which is $900 nowadays. Man, these dang Schecters that y'all keep bringing in, like, what, what would you even consider that? Like a honey bird? of some sort? I don't know, but it looks really good with that gold hardware though. And of course the neck through on it just looks so good. Oh my God. That's crazy that you only use super glue and it's held together since then. I mean, but <laughs> if it works, it works, man. That's so awesome. 
from Chris Johnson. He says, here's my Nitro Warmoth P-Base body with an aftermarket fender neck. Bought it about 15 years ago in high school at a pawn shop and I had it in layaway for a year before I had all the money. I call it mama because it's always been there for me no matter how many instruments have come and gone. Oh, I love that. I've taken it to every gig since I got it. The floral plate covers a botched pickup routing from a hack luthier. Geezer Butler EMG signature pickup. Hope she makes the cut, Chris. Ooh, this thing is beat the hell, man. Hell yeah. Oh my God, it really is. So while the floral plate isn't really like my thing per se, that's a really creative way of covering like the botched pickup routing though. Man, I love all the little battle scars on this thing, man. You can just tell it's been through a lot and I love that so much. It's just something that really shows the character of a base. From Randy Dom, he says, hey Patrick, really love the channel. You're one of three channels that has a notification bell on. Keep up the good content. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, stop it. I mean, but you can be like Randy and subscribe and go ahead and hit that notification bell. You know, if you want, I'm not your dad or your boss, so do whatever you want. As for my bass, I got this as a gift from my late grandmother. I love the feel and sound of BTB because of this one. I will never let this one go, even if I have to live under a bridge. Hopefully you can do something with it. I've seen your opinion on BTBs. Greetings from the Netherlands, Randy. BTBs are so weird looking to me. I don't know what it is. I think it's just because of how wide they are and then like how big the horns are too. But I have no doubt about the playability, the feel and the sound that you can get out of them just because it's an Ibanez. And as for the looks, I really love the finish on it and love the different pieces of wood that Ibanez put together for this base. But just the styling, this is not my thing. Next up from Yair Carney or Yair. I'm sorry if I totally butchered that right there, man. It says, hey man, what a cool idea. Looking forward to seeing other dudes weapons of choice. My name is Yair Carney. 20 from Israel. My beloved base is a Mayonis Commodus 6 custom made. Somehow when I was 17, I thought it was wise to spend all my savings on a base. Well, yeah, it was. I love it so much because it became with time the sound I expect to hear. The perfect combination of fullness, punch, and frequencies. The sound is very flexible. It has a powerful preamp piezo system. The humbuckers can be split. I never get bored. Being a six string, I feel like it makes me more creative. I feel free to wander everywhere. Maybe most important, it feels so natural in my hands. It fully cooperates with me and playing legato is a surprisingly easy with this baby, which is important to me. Man, that is awesome. Oh, look at that. Bases that Mayonas makes are just so exquisite. I've only gotten to play them at NAMM before. Oh, they're just like perfect on so many levels. And I love the styling of this. It's just so unique, but not too out there to me. I love the look of it. And man, I bet it plays and sounds so fun in every way. Next up from Ease, he says, Hey Patrick, this is my Warwick Masterbuilt Thumb 5 NT. Very short description, plays awesome and growls like a <laughs> Cheers, Eves from Switzerland. Ah, man, thumbs are so ugly to me, but it's a Warwick, so I know the sounds of it and just the feel of it is just so perfect. I can't get over how ugly thumbs are, but God, Warwicks are so rad, man. Ah. From Zach, he says, Patrick, I'm super stoked to see that you're doing this. Through the years of checking out all your videos, I've always felt that I've had similar taste and gear as you. My 76 Gibson Grabber, it's in great shape for its age, some wear finish on the body and fretboard, not to mention the pickup slides around a bit when you don't want it to. Otherwise, this thing is a beast. Woo. Yep, it's a grabber, which means it's just, mwah. God, grabbers are so badass. Gibson, come on, start doing some smart moves and actually make grabbers again, come on. I really, really think that if Gibson brought back the grabber, just went ahead and made it the most bare bones base they could, sort of like the Les Paul Jr. they have right now, make it for $1,000, made in America, just go. I mean, it's essentially just a slab of maple with a maple neck on it too, and that's it. So, I mean, come on, Gibson. From Cosma, he says, hi, Patrick. So here's my own signature base, as I like to say. Built out of a jazz base DIY kit, purple oil finish, brass fender bridge, and one volume knob. Hopefully someday I could upgrade pickups and tuners. Still absolutely love that base for its simplicity and raw hot rodness, if that's even a thing. Cheers from Poland, Cosma. Oh, dude, I love that color. I love that instead of just doing it exactly like the DIY kit would show, you just said, nope, I want to do it exactly like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the p base neck pickup. Then we're going to go ahead and do a volume knob and that's it. That's so cool, dude. It's of course giving me that Mark Hoppus p base vibe and I love that, man. This is so cool. I really love that color too. And last and certainly not least from Max, he says, hi, Patrick. I started playing bass when I was around 16 and listening to a lot of music it was always a big hobby. The sound of music, especially the bass, was always interesting to me. I played a no-name jazz bass in the, my first years of playing and always dreamt about a Rickenbacker. So I worked my ass off to go for a real Rickenbacker. Many of my bass idols played it. Cliff Burton, Geddy Lee, and Lemmy, or Paul McCartney, just to name a few classics. My goal is to collect more and more basses the next years. This is my Rickenbacker 4000 
2003 S in Jet Glow from last year. It hasn't gotten any modifications or special features that I added. I'm true to the reissued original optics, sound, and Technics and will let it grow as it is. I'll keep this one for my lifetime and will take this to the grave for sure. Greens from Northern Germany and stay safe out there, Max. Ah, you guys are sending in all these bases that I don't need to be interested in buying. Again, Rickenbackers, there's something about them. It's that classic look and, of course, that classic tone you get out of them. Um, I really do love the simplicity of just in black as well. Man, now y'all going to make me get a Jaguar. Y'all are going to make me get a Rickenbacker. We got to calm down. <laughs> And that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for submitting. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't submitted your base yet and want to do so, go ahead and send an email to show me what you base at gmail.com where I want you guys to send in three or more pictures of it. Uh, a very brief description, preferably no more than like one or two paragraphs. And also, this is a very big one. Just one base. One base, please one base. But again, thank you so much everyone who has submitted so far. Again, I'm still at over like 350, I think over 400 emails still. So yeah, this just takes a while, but I'm going to keep going with this series if you guys keep watching it and want to see more. But again, thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. And of course, all those awesome things. Follow me on social media and a humongous thank you to my beautiful Patreon supporters as well. Mwah, mwah. If you want to be like these beautiful people and help support the channel and also be included in early access to videos, giveaways, and more, head over to my Patreon page. But again, thank you all so much for watching as always. And no matter where in the world you are, stay safe, practice that base, and I'll see you all next time.